Welcome back to Berlin, host of the world's 2019 play-in stage. It's time to meet the final team competing in Group B. Coming all the way from the Liga Latino America, it's the year-long regional champions, Isarus Gaming! <laughs> Let's hear it one more time for Isarus Gaming as they hit the rift for the first time here at Worlds 2019. Good evening, everybody. I'm Atlas, joined by Ejim. They've got the Oceanic duo together here after that mammoth victory. It was a banger. Both in name and in the way it happened. Absolutely amazing. How, how do you feel, Bryce? I, I know we'd need to be talking about this next matchup, but this is an OS win. How, how are we doing? It's just hope, you know what I mean? Hope on first day for Oceanic fans has been uh, a little bit of a rocky road in the past, <laughs> but you heard the interview, right? Like, King is feeling good about yeah. the victory, Mammoth. They are looking good, and yeah, super happy to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to have that debut of Isaris Gaming as mm -hmm. well, a team that disappointed a little bit on the MSI stage, going 0-3 and three on their first day and then managing to pick up some victories after that. This is a squad that's the culmination mm. of Latin America South and North, and... Our buddy Spawn is pretty hot on these guys. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. For Isaris Gaming, like to take a look at things big picture, right? This is the first year with the two LATAM uh, regions. They combine forces, making the Super League as you will. And Isaris takes the best parts of the North and the South. And they have the veterancy. They have the new blood in Warangalus and the bot side. They're a very interesting team and in a very interesting group. It's kind of uh, the way that the draw show unfolded. We have the hyper-aggressive groups with all the Asian regions. But then you have Splice, you have Dead FM, and you have Isaris. They'd like to slow it down much more. Yeah, and Isaris looks like the same team on paper, but behind the scenes, Yeti has come onto this squad as yeah. the head coach, and he has always been the Latin American North god, the mm -hmm. man that's been able to create these superstar teams such as Lion Gaming that was so strong. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be the difference maker here? Uh, I think it certainly could be, right? Like, if you look at their regional performance domestically in split number one, Isaris Gaming from fourth made the victory, but were kind of uh, unexpected there. But Yeti has been on teams with Oddi, with Sayer, the big names from this region uh, before. And here today, honestly, that's a big boon. The pickup, Dead FM, already starting the, the series off here in 0-1. Yeah. They're looking like the favorites coming in. Well, we'll see whether Isaris can play up to expectations already. The bands have come through Aurelia and the Asuo and the Lucian being taken away by Detonation Focus Me, Isaris yeah. Gaming, to get rid of Ceres' Heimerdinger, mm -hmm. the Thresh, and the Pantheon that we haven't seen so far this playing stage. And what is going to be the first lock in Ooh. the Echo first pick? 0-3 currently. Analyst Desk had a few words to say about it. Echo coming in as a hot favorite into Worlds 2019, but hasn't seen the greatest amount of success. But I will say, like, taking a look at the stuff that's being hovered right now, Teemo actually not a troll pick there for Bugax, has pulled it out in playoff series. But going up into Detonation Focus Me, they are a little bit of a weird team. The Heimerdinger, the Pantheon was kind of played before it was cool. Now we are in a patch where everybody kind of considers it broken. Absolutely 100% ban rate here, but... Getting through with it, Ezreal and Gragas locked in for Isaris. Now, I, I find this really interesting. Is J I'm glad Jake brought it, brought it up on the desk. Uh, good old Spawn back there saying, we haven't seen the Elise. Feels yeah. like she's been replaced uh, by the Echo. If I had been casting any other games uh, back in yeah. career, of course, where I'm from, this would have been a Renekton Elise follow-up immediately. Yeah. It doesn't actually happen, and instead we are able to go back to Detonation, focus me after the Ezreal and Gragas lock-ins for the Lovers Duo, though, on the bottom side of the map. The Rakan and the Zaya coming in, yeah. and the Rakan ants are going to be there with the and, Leona. And I think this is sort of weird, right? Like, you can take a look at Leona I into the Rakan. So. Like, that is a, a tried-and-true matchup you see with a different AD carry that makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is a bottom lane that, as I mentioned earlier, like, Isaris likes to play around the Morongolus, gets a lot of resources down there, so it makes sense to lock down, like, a Leona lane. The counter pick is good, but pairing it with an Ezreal is not something you would have expected here, but maybe just hedging their bets, you know, scaling is fine going up against something like the Zyra Rakan. Yeah, I feel like the Leona was more of a pivot pickup yeah, because yeah, they yeah. saw the Rakan right there, and mm -hmm. you can follow him around when he's battle dancing his way to success. What I would love to see from Detonation Folks Me is for them to actually flex this Echo properly. Mm -hmm. I mean, last time we saw the theoretical Echo mid coming in with the Nocturne there, yeah. and then that was switched over. Vidius very excited in the, the Castle Lounge, of course. Not the item build, but when it got picked up, mm -hmm. definitely a good thing there for him. 
I want to see it actually flexed here. I want to see them make sure that they get this Echo into a position where they really want it. As the Nautilus, sorry, the Nocturne has been banned yeah. by Isaris Gaming. So what surprising to get rid of it. Uh, that, that one's going to hit the bench. But talking about like the Echo Flex, right? Like specific matchups, this is playable. I will also note that Seros, uh, back in the LJL, was playing this pick like much like the Pantheon. He played it in old school matchups before the most recent buffs in the mid lane. And uh, those matchups like the Syndra, we just saw that game uh, with Mammoth locking in the Syndra. The Flex was available. It does really depend on this pick right now, uh, what they want to lock in for say if they do choose to pick his champion that like echo could it be an option <laughs> maybe we're going for nobles here on Isaris's side as the garen being hovered probably not going to get locked in as the nar is going to be picked up yeah. bug axe going to be out to grab that for the top side picking it away from evi mm -hmm. more than anything else we saw evi doing that to visit chachi earlier on today and yep. now it's going to happen once again Evie's got 11 plays domestically and was the Kennen matchup. And it was kind of that weird team fight, right? Like around the bottom side of yeah. mid lane where Nar gets a huge ulti back onto multiple people. Then Kennen does exactly the same thing. So you see the power in this pick already. Kale's been banned today, but... Yeah, and Kale okay. has been a favorite for Evie as well domestically. He's had a few games on it so far and that was in summer of course so relatively recently and Kale has gone through a few changes over mm -hmm. the last three patches we'll have to see how it's going to do here as Ceres is going to lock away the Karma one of his favorite picks of course in the mid lane over in Japan yeah and it is kind of interesting right Karma received a couple of nerfs recently less oh, interesting the rise but this composition is probably the least interesting it's the classic rise nah combination mm -hmm. we've been seeing it for many, many years. Looking over the other side, though, you've got the craziness of the Kale and maybe an Echo that can win a game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe you hope so if you're a LJL fan here. But let's take a look at some of the spe uh, picks specifically, right? The Kale you mentioned, Jat was saying earlier, kind of easing the burden. Kale has always been like a late game, super monstrous champion, will take over everything on the Rift and getting extra range early kind of eases the burden. We saw with the Nar pick and then the Cannon from Vizichachi earlier today, like the range matchups do deal with it best. And then we'll just become like a, a huge side lane threat that can actually group, right? Like you look at the side lane is that do six successful things that Camille, if she gets a flank off, can one hit an 80 carry. Kale is just bonkers, right? If he gets to his items, there's no doubting that Evie will be a uh, force to be reckoned with. And when they lock in the Karma, the Rakan, these two shield-based supportive champions can just press the E buttons on his head and let Evie right-click some champions. Honestly, if the game is going to be slow, that's a good strategy. Yep, well, we'll see how the Kale is going to do. Of course, change so that she's a little bit stronger early and a little bit less oppressive in the latest yeah. stages of the game. A little bit compressed, yeah, one flattened. could say, as far as uh, how she's going to go flattened. A much better way to do it. Thank you mm -hmm. very much, Ejim. Uh, so, by the way, when are you coming to the LCK? Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can teach me some words over there as well, my friend. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll just, I'll be baby smithy. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need Baby Smithy. We're yeah. still we're gonna, I'm gonna be recruiting as many of you as possible uh, <laughs> over the course of these plans. But Isaris Gaming versus Detonation. Focus me. Let's get onto the rift for our fourth game of the day. And okay, this is gonna be another Dark Harvest Echo pickup. A lot yeah. of people hmm. saw that as kind of one of the solo queue options. You know, get it. A couple of extra stacks, extra kills can run rampant all over the place. Electrocute, a little bit more consistent, but this is going to be the second one we've seen of the day. So still following in the footsteps. Okay, Audi getting a little bit of attention here from Evi. He's just going to throw out a bit of a love tap. Of course, the Kleptomancy coming in on the Kale. Mm. Standard banker build. And I don't think that Anara is going to be able to offer that much of a threat unless you go for the full laning Nar build. Are we going to see Rage Blade? Blade uh, of the Ruin King, crazy stuff from Bugax. I don't know. I don't think so because he's going to have to play for teamfights and try and play around this Kale more than anything else. Yeah, I think it would be uh, interesting. You do have options when it comes to the Nara. You can go for the PTA, play much more aggressive. Like a jungler like yeah. Gragas can make things happen early. We've seen, and the analyst test was talking about it, like the comparison of Echo to Elise, the two mage junglers on the current patch, Elise, heavily early game, whereas Echo scale is that little bit better. Gragas certainly has the advantage, but in looking at this comp from Isaris, you see a Leona, you see a Gragas, even a Rise, like the CC setup. Kale isn't really the region you're looking to attack, right? Like getting on top of Isaiah Khan, the Leona into this matchup can be super oppressive. So I would expect uh, Isaris Gaming, traditionally they like to play around the bot side, that could be the play here versus Dead Effect. 
Yeah, and based on how these compositions have been put together, I'm looking at Dead FM and I'm seeing a lot of 4-1 options, given the fact that you are going to mm. be uh, most likely putting an Arden Sensor on the Karma, and that way you've got Utapon in a great position on the Zaya to get damage down and to be safe in a Siege scenario, and you put Kale in that side lane. Is What are Isaris Gaming's options as far as answering the playstyle that Dead FM have put on the table? Yeah, I think uh, kind of a lot and kind of not, right? They do have like double side lane potential, they have the Rise, they have the Nar. Yep. As long as they don't get too far behind, Kale will obviously be the difficult one to deal with, but uh, Karma not so much. So 1-3-1, one, one, as you get into the mid game, like if you want to slow down the game, that is an option, absolutely. But in terms of like disengage, the one thing I will say, right, when you look at a 4-1 versus a 1-3-1, uh, traditionally it's about forcing, getting caught in the three, the mid lane, like that is where you lose the game as the three. And there's a lot of force on the other side. You have Echo, he's just like free as hell, right? He goes yeah. in, you can just R backwards. The commit is just not there. You have the Rakan in gang's hands. And this is a guy that has been uh, super, super big for this roster, right? He makes things happen for them. And Gragas is kind of all they've got. Well, we'll see whether they can make that one work. The ganking duo, of course, of the Echo and the Rakan. Just thinking about the possible options mm. there with uh, CC lockdown and gap close is just terrifying. Rakan just likes friends. <laughs> he was released with Zaya, uh -huh. and then he likes a buddy to dive in first, and then he gets to go second. Would you say that Rakan is little... the most extroverted champion that we have in the roster of League of Legends? Extroverted? Yeah, I just likes to make that. as many friends as possible. Maybe Ivan, though. Oh, Ivan, yeah. Ivan definitely is a But friend his friends don't guy. speak back, so mm. it's a bit of a one-sided conversation. And I guess the other one would be Yumi, because you know, oh. hangs, it hangs out with a lot of people. He's got a bit of an engage towards the bottom side. But it's slow. He's got the Eclipse there mm -hmm. and also had the Aftershock, so not going to be taking too much. There's the uh, turnaround, but Arcane Shift. Pretty good ability, despite the fact that uh, it has lost a little bit of that cooldown. Yeah, and it's an uh, interesting 2v2, right? Uh, Leona obviously wants to keep doing this sort of stuff. Like, you get on top of the Rakan, the Q immediately. If he goes in, he kind of dies on the return once you hit that level 6 mark. But uh, in terms of the junglers right now, Steel is down here. Gragas in absolute Nani on the other side of the map. Like, <laughs> looking for any forward plays right now for Isaris will be difficult. And not to mention the Combat Summit as well. They have the TP, they do have the Ignite. The Cleanse is there from Utapon, so... Just trying to keep himself safe, but... Say, uh, maybe in a little bit of trouble here, but floating the correct side of the map. Yep, he is going to be uh, at least heading up towards his vision and his jungler. Speaking of junglers, Oddi is on the Gragas, and it's the first time we've seen it today. Of course, was nerfed mm -hmm. in uh, 919, which is probably good. He was uh, extraordinarily dominant. Super on busted. 16, yeah. Mm -hmm. Busted as heck. I believe it was it you that coined the. Better Lee Sin. No, that was not me. That wasn't you. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is one of those situations where you would, would have loved me to say yes. Yeah, you could have lied. <laughs> just, you? Come on, It's man. just not it. No, 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 no. So uh, I think that was uh, that was Jake talking to uh, Spooks about that one. Mm -hmm. Gragas was certainly in uh, just a, a state of a lot of happiness okay. on uh, 916. But do you think the nerfs have changed him enough? Uh, not particularly. Like, I'm not surprised to see him here. He definitely needed them, but uh, certainly isn't out of contention by any means. Like, the rise of Echo changes things somewhat. The priority is uh, a little bit out of whack, but uh, certainly still a very good champion. Oddi is well-versed. He's actually one of his most played. That and Skana over the course of the domestic season. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, this is a team that likes to play, like, around the lanes. He's much more of a, of a facilitative jungler. He gets stuck soloing a mountain dragon while his lane is pushing just because they play with the tempo, they play with the pressure, and don't look to force things super early. And, and this is exactly what's happening here today. Yep, well, Evie is uh, shoving in onto this Nar over, no mana, over again. But yeah, has been completely drained of the mana. Boomerang Blade is going to land. Bugax just gets himself another Grass proc and will send Kale home. Not going to chase down at this stage, but Evie's done a great job so far. Only four CS behind, but does have that Klepto and is Kale, mm. which is the main thing that you've got to think about. Steel Parallel Convergence is in there, but Sayer is pretty comfortable. And if we have a look down the line when it comes to the farm, it's bottom side of the map for Dead FM that's looking absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. but elsewhere, it's pretty comfortable for everyone. And if this game stays even, who is that benefiting? Uh, it's an interesting question, right? Because the comps yeah, do I'm very not, different struggling. things. Yeah, like the, like the Zyra Khan and you have the shield comp can be super oppressive from ahead. Like at this transitions, they get to three items, crit 80 carry. Yes, versus the Ezreal, like there are engage options with the uh, the Leona, but it's definitely much more down to play style, right? Like I think uh, Isra certainly want to be playing the map much more. Dead FM, they want to get to their item break points. They just want to shield heads, look for the team fights and play much more around the objectives. Like if this is a super slow game, and I was mentioning before, like that is kind of what you expect and what we haven't seen yet. Uh, in the world's play-in so far, but 
Yeah, like Rift Herald Prio, like Dragon Spawns. It's just an ocean here today. Not like an Infernal or anything, but certainly uh, very good in the early game. But really nobody setting priority on it so far just yet. As I say that, though, Dead FM linking up quite nicely. Jungle support looking for... Bit of invade on the blue buff here. Yep, and I think we should probably expect this uh, quite often. Rakan mm -hmm. and Echo, best friends crew, trying to get around the map and get opponents caught out unawares. But still is going to achieve his namesake here with the takeaway on the blue buff. Pretty going good to, to deny that one from Seiya. He's yeah. boom at the moment. Would have really liked the blue buff. Mm -hmm. Feels uh, actually pretty bad there. Gragas actually just shepherding a recall in the mid lane. Oddie and Seiya, long time duo, uh, given that. Saros was just sitting there pushing. He has mana, and as you mentioned, Saya absolutely does not. Doesn't have TP either, but this does mean, with all the vision control they have on the bot side, a dive is coming. Yeah. Oddie, in the area. Well, Steel and Saros are around, but slow comes in from the barrel. Oddie's going to be safe and is just going to stand there as a living ward. Bugax gets the push back, and he's ahead by a few CS, but gang, are you going to be all right? Yep, should be fine. Steel is there in the river as well. So we've got a lot of Ooh. posturing so far as the Ocean Drake has been started. Good body slam comes in there as Steel doesn't necessarily know what he wants to be doing here yeah. as the Dragon's going to once again get upset. Phase dive over the wall. Waits for it to come off cooldown. True shot barrage. Flash ult. And has to use the ultimate to get out of the way. He used the flash as well. Yes. Flashed on I the spot. I feel like he only needed Audi. to use one of those as he dashes around and that steel falling down. First blood going over to Adi for ISG. But I have to feel like that was mostly a mistake. Yeah, just a disastrous scenario. And I was going to say, that's like almost Tom Kench syndrome. Like, do I pop the gray health? Do I not? It was such a weird situation to be in. And he just panics, and Ezreal ulti comes flying in from stage right, flashes on the spot, ulti's back into danger, and Oddie bonks him on the head, cleans him up. Yeah, I think that's a fat finger, if ever I've seen one. However, we don't necessarily know. We're going to have a look at it one more time as still, yeah, phase dive off cooldown, nice. Yep. And then, yeah. Oh, that hurts. It does. That hurts. An ocean dragon, likely one of the worst dragons to be stuck in the pit with, you know? Even, <laughs> even Oddy is popping it on the way out. Uh, the slow, the damage. And also you get friend. nothing if you kill it. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels bad all over the uh -huh. place. So, Isaris have been gifted a kill in this early game. Detonation Focus Me still have a composition that can recover from this. Not the end of the world by any means. 600 gold is going to be the lead here for Isaris Gaming after that first one goes down. As Slow just okay. walks at them. That's the flash. Lands. Daybreak does come down, but Unipon goes up into the sky. And Slow not going to be able to offer any more after Saya made his way down with the Realm Warp. They just wander out. Still. Okay. Oddie finds a nice body slam. Oh. Still getting taken down. Slow Luxury Chopper again. Can't dodge it this time. Doesn't have either yeah. of those cooldowns, of course. A sliver of a CDR bar there from the Echo Ulti, and he cannot find it. So two times in a row. Latin American snipe, Sniper here, cleaning up a couple of kills, and now Oddie finds his way to the Dragon. And I was going to say, this is kind of what you expect, right? The slow early game, you ding that level 6 mark, then you have the Rakan, then you have the Leona. Oddie himself is almost one-tapping the Echo. This is where the game really turns on, and Isaris already two kills and an Ocean Dragon. This laning phase is only getting better and better right now, and Steel just struggling to make an impact again on the Echo we see today. Yep, probably going to see some sort of reset here from Isaris Gaming, but maybe we'll look towards Shelly for our next objective. Still gonna be re-clearing his jungle here and haven't seen any funny business just yet. Of course, the nation folks me, they need to clean up their play, but otherwise things will be all right. Evie's just sitting there telling his yep. team like, guys, please don't feed, I'm Kale. We're gonna be fine. Eventually he's gonna get there, but uh, certainly is an eventuality a long time away. You can see, as you mentioned, maybe Rift Herald next on the cards absolutely is gonna be the case. Reset from slow into instant Moby Boots. Also has a Hex Flash, which I super like, especially in the, the bot lane 2v2. Like, you oh, burn yeah. the Flash, you burn the Cleanse. They can just keep fishing for these fights that they wanted. So uh, it takes a little trek onto top side towards the Rift Herald. But that Pryo in the top lane, it is difficult to start straight away, but setting vision is definitely the first step and ISG thinking about it. Yep. I'm looking at this comp and uh, Seiya, he's almost towards his uh, Rod of Ages, looks to be the first item that he's going to lock down. Going for that double scaling with the tier there, of course. We've seen uh, a few rises recently opt away from the Rod of Ages, but yeah. Seiya going full greed, mm -hmm. which I respect. And there is like the two different variants, the uh, the more standard one, then you have like the Righteous Glory, the tanker one. We saw actually picked into Seros on the Nocturne earlier today. Righteous Glory completed, gives you armor to deal with it. Could be an option here. There's not... 
Mm. Actually, maybe not. There is, there is a, a reasonable amount of AP damage where Udipon being like the one big AP threat here, but Dead FM. Mm. Yeah, it is a little bit dangerous. I mean, look, shields. Looking at uh, what everyone has to be responsible for as we move into this game, I think this mid game's looking really good mm -hmm. for Isaris Gaming. They've got the Nar ultimate that is so pivotal around a lot of these skirmishes that are in either Shelly's pit or the dragons. In this case, most likely Shelly's. And then Rise can get to that machine gun stage, especially now that level nine has been hit. Not necessarily able to get that shield anymore, but is still just a powerhouse when it comes to AOE damage. Yeah. And that's what this comp can do. They can keep people locked down or bring someone to them and then a rune prism, whether it's a rune or a slow, doesn't matter. It's gonna be that kill set up anyway. So Oddie and Slow will have a lot of agency when it comes to deciding on what fights are gonna happen because the Rise and the Nar are going to be so able to follow up. And then they don't need to worry about War Angelus because he can just self peel. He's just chilling. He's yeah. just chilling in the back. I think interestingly, this game, right? Like in terms of, yes, it's just slow. Okay, yeah, ulti for ulti. But Oddy is here. Predator has been popped. Flash like five seconds from cooldown, but they're still looking for the dive. Yeah, we're going to find the barrel into the wall. Udipon underneath the turret now as Isaris Gaming not going to go for the dive. Feathers are going to be pulled back. The teleport is channeled and Saros makes his way down and stops his friends from being destroyed. Yeah, and I was going to say, this map of League of Legends in this game has felt so big. The lanes are kind of just isolated. No roaming between the two, but Isaris, as soon as that hit... The 13 minute mark, still looking for the return dive. No yeah, cast, but Oddie's in. Coming down. The quickness was there, but it is not enough. Saros now is going to be the dessert. Can they actually grab it? Slow's going to go down for the good of the colony, and Saya misses the Q. Oh, no, Ooh. it's a disaster. Saros with the outplay under the Adatar bottom lane, and the fadeaway jump shot barrel is not going to be enough, and the Mystic shot goes wide. What a disaster. That looked like complete disaster there for Denifan, but Saras comes up clutch. The Mantra W, so much healing off the back end, and multiple members just go down, dying to the turret. Yeah, I think that was the themes because he got all of that health back yeah. instantly as mm -hmm. well. Damn. All right, well, I mean, we were talking about potential tilters for Mammoth in the last game. That's a potential tilter there on the bottom side. We'll see whether Isaris Gaming can pull it back. Yeah. And I think specifically for the map state right there, if that gank is successful, the dive happens, Isaris set that up very well. Like the play by the playbook was very smart, well, very well thought out, just execution blundered, right? Like the, yeah. they don't get the damage, Saras cleans up and it's fine, but Steel was on the other side of the map. There was no way he was going to be relevant in that play. Picking on Bugax in the top side, like he's pretty safe, full HP, Mega Nar, reasonably hard to dive. Evian Steel could have made it work, but in a very slow game, it is like a game of inches. Like what can you take? How much does that mean? down the line for a champion like the Rise for the Ezreal and Sarah standing tall here. It's definitely a big swing back for this one. Yeah, let's have a look at it one more time from Saros's pr perspective. Nice flash. Very, very good. Dodging out. Start a step on the Rise. Q coming flying out. Dodges the Ezreal and the second one as well. Third onto the Rise. Saros on a Karma. This isn't an Akali, it's not an Aurelia just dancing all over the place. He's just fancy feeding all over Isaris and... That's, uh, That's sick. Yeah, he certainly locked that one down. But you have to say that a lot of it had to do with ISGs. We've got another engage, Zenith play towards the Return. bottom Return! Great grand entrance there as Slow is being caught out and he ain't going anywhere. Udipon locks down that kill as Rangelis has to get out of there. Arcane shift utilized, in comes Steel. Phase dive is there and he's going to be taken down as well and Dead FM have come alive. And the complete turnaround of the map. Yes, Steel will go down, but that was the five man commit to the bottom side. They want to make something happen. We are after 14 minutes. 15.30 on the clock means that plating is long gone. Turrets are fairly squishy and uh, actually Looking for the return there, Slow and Rangelis, they were looking for that play. Now Seiya in trouble, gets knocked up underneath the turret. Yep, it's a disaster. Unipon's gonna be able to grab that kill for himself, and now this outer turret should be falling down. Likely a trade as Bugax is on the top side of the map, taking down the outer there as well. But when your mid laner dies at the same time and you're up against a Kale, it is a really dangerous time to be Isaris Gaming here yeah. on this map. And here we go. This is full tank Nara as well. They've understood that they need to play for these team fights, have some of that front line there and rely on the Ezreal and the Rise damage. But I'm worried that that's going yeah. to be enough when it comes to AD because we were looking at Nar as being able to augment the Ezreal that's very pokey, not necessarily a large amount of physical damage because it's so split amongst the magic and the physical. That is a full tank Nar.
with the Sunfire Cape just yeah. completed. And I think the bigger thing is, given the last five minutes of play, I've mentioned it multiple times, like how much defensive stats Dead FM will opt into. The shields will be very difficult to break through when you mentioned Nah going full tank. He has a Sunfire, he's got a raincoat, and Rai's already sitting 0 to. He's a long way away from being relevant and breaking through the Rakan, breaking through the Karma in the later stages. If you are like a defensive composition and the opponent like has to be forcing into you, it can be very difficult to break through that sort of vanguard there, and yeah, as this one progresses, it looked good for Isaris in the early game, but Dead FM completely swinging on the bottom side of the map. Yep. Now, where Angelus is looking to try and take down this outer turret, it's going to be a nice injection of gold there as Isaris do still have an advantage. Just sidesteps out of that grand entrance there as Oddy's made his way down here. Three versus three is yeah. prepared. And Steel's looking to try and take down this ward. They do mm -hmm. so comfortably. All junglers in the area, but the big thing is cleanse down from Uniporn. Maybe another minute on the cooldown-ish, but that is what made the turnaround happen, right? Slow land at the CC, but Zaya Rakan. All right, we're going to find Ooh, the barrel. Bug okay. X makes his way in. Nowhere near Meganar, and he's underneath the turret right now. Steel gets himself towards it. Oddy goes golden, now still very, very low, but the good sidestep on all Evie. those abilities. Evie flashing forward, and now the Kale has joined the game. Bug X finally towards the Meganar. Is now they're looking for the turn. Will he get there? Oh. No, he'll press the R button and only find the air, and Evie decides to turn on it. Now it's their turn underneath turrets, but Detonation Focus Me won't push too far. And every single dive is just being turned around by Dead FM. They're just sitting, standing tall. Mid turret will break. Warungalus finally gets to the play, but a little bit too late there. And Oddy Burnt stopwatch just dies in the play. Another kill over to the KL. Dead FM are completely ramping up in this one. Yep, 2 0 0 now on this KL, sort of gifted. Those few kills in that skirmish that came to him in the mid lane. That is exactly what you don't want if you're an Isaris gaming fan. This is Detonation Focus Me that feels like they've shaken their sillies out, you know, after mm. after that first loss. That first loss was not a good one. That's not a good feels loss because they were basically out of the game for the majority of yeah. it, right? When you're forced to dive with that uh, mid nocturne, things like that, it, it makes it a lot more difficult. But now they've got a composition that's more of a, hey, you guys come to us and uh, we'll just kill you. And that makes sense, right? Like, think about it a little bit big picture. Splice, the number one seed in this group, they come from the major region. Maybe yeah. looking at this one, they're like, let's throw a Hail Mary. Let's go super aggressive. Let's get the Nocturne dive the back line into... That was a difficult comp, right? There was the Zaya that you had to get on the Rakan uh, and the Cannon. And this game, in a more comparable opponent, Dead FM have played Isaris Gaming before. They're like, let's take it back to what we have done best. In the LJL, like Dead FM are already a slow team in a relatively slow region. This is exactly what they wanted in an early game. All of their advances this game have come from a reaction. Like Isaris look for the dive and they're always there with a very swift punish. And now they're in a good position going into mid lane. They have a mid game rather. Two item spikes on almost all of their carries right now. Just waiting on the rapid fire upgrade there from Utapon. And they're sitting pretty to head into the mid game. Yeah, we don't even have Ceres completed here from Sayer as well as Evie. Could be a gank opportunity. Good Boomerang is going to land. Can Bug X actually survive for long enough? But he's got that tanky build. He might just be able to. Ult comes down. Evi. Oh, the layering of CC is beautiful. True Shot Barrage gets rid of the Kale. But now in goes oh. That's a huge knock up with the grand entrance onto four as Unipod has the Feather Storm out. And it is a storm on the top side. Detonation Focus Me have found everyone. Say now looking for Steel. And he is going to be out of the Power numbers now. We're Angulus. Can you actually get the work done? Yes. He can find the kill, but he does eventually get taken down. A beautiful team fight, but a sloppy one on both sides. Dead FM come out ahead. And just as the clock ding 20, it looked like a complete wipe, but ISG, Saya and Warongles keep the dreams alive. If that was a wash, that could have been barren. That could have almost been lights out, but here, yeah, 1v2 still looking. The tether. Good knock up there from the grand entrance, and Saya knew he was dead. And he's just going to go down. The Karma picks up that kill, and I love this look out of Seros. I never say this, right? I never say that I love a Karma at any stage. <laughs> we have a look at the replay, but this suits his playstyle yeah. so much better. And just so many resources committed onto a Kale, and a Kale that has a stopwatch at the end of the day. Slow goes in as the second phase on this play, and the bottom lane from Dead FM, Udipon and Gang coming from the side, four man knockup onto basically everyone. And at this point, you were like, that's Baron, that is Dead FM running away with this one, but a little bit split off. You can see Gang happy feeding between the two. He's like, do I go forwards? Do I help my mid laner running back? And unfortunately, that is going to cost the Zaya life, and they have to chase down Rise at the end of the day. But in all honesty, that was such a big play. It continuously is being Isaris Gaming throwing themselves at Dead FM, and they're always there with a the response.
This mid game Ezreal though is getting the work yeah, done. He's that one v one that he sort of isolated himself for against Utapon was certainly won by him on the back end, despite not very many buttons being available for the Zaya. You can see it in the damage numbers. This is what this yeah. team plays around almost every single time. And they to a certain extent do the same thing. They are uh, they play around either Utapon or Ebi in most of their victories. Mm -hmm. There's a bit high fee. Both of these teams oh. looking at one another. A party cask flies into the mid lane. Yeah. Just fishing for an opportunity. Non-committal engage, kind of a plenty here for Isaris. They have the Leona, can just throw ulti. They have the Dragas, he can just throw ulti as he did. And Ezreal is doing significant damage from afar. Dragon's going to be the easy prize, uncontested here by the Japanese team. But you saw that single Q from the Ezreal. Yeah. He's almost at a balk. That's going to be three item spikes. We've been mentioning like Dead FM as this progresses further and further. They are in a good spot. For Ungulus, he's in a good spot. Individually, this guy uh, is primed and ready. And you saw the back end of that team fight can make the damage stick and certainly a threat here for Dead FM. There is an opportunity. You're exactly right. I'm glad that you brought up the itemization for these AD carries because I feel like as soon as, as Utapon, when he, while he doesn't have his Infinity Edge, Morangulus is going to be feeling way better yeah. in this particular matchup. But once that third item does come in for the Zyre, it feels like it's all downhill for what the Ezreal can offer in these team fights if you're comparing just DPS between the two. So Isaris Gaming, despite the fact that team fights haven't necessarily been going their way, they are completely tied yeah. up in gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have an Ezreal that's in a really good spot yeah. for this stage of the game. And map state right now, the reset coming from Dead FM, they just walk top. They have infinite Baron prior. They have all the vision around the objective. Not a lot of pink wards, and Dead FM are likely going to push up mid and try and sweep some of that out. But they've got the side lanes already pushing. You can see Sayer and Audi, long time duo. Pushing out the top side together, then maybe rotating towards the play. Finding any sort of catch will be a huge prize for them, but Dead FM now looking to walk towards the Baron buff. Yep, need to clear out a whole lot of vision here, as Isaris Gaming have certainly done mm -hmm. a better job putting down their vision buttons. Rift Scuttler will go over to Dead FM as they have slowed down quite a lot. This has given Isaris a chance yeah. to find more of that standing gold on the map, hoover up a few more of these red dots. As we go further and further, of course, Dead FM not too worried given their composition, but I'm a little bit worried given the fact that they did have a lead and they haven't been necessarily pushing it. Yeah, I think the big worry is the map state right now. The 1 3 1 well and truly set up for Isaris, and the hardest part of this style of comp is actually getting into the deployment, getting the side lanes in a, in a reasonable position where they actually have priority, they have some pressure, and if they force in the mid lane, you do have a portal call, a response. And you saw off that full reset from Dead FM, they got the Baron control, they got the vision, and now they're fine. Say just pushing bouncing waves topside. Seros wants absolutely nothing to do with the rise. Like he's been popping off defending these dives, but in a 1v1, Saya will want rampant over that one. The Narden Sensor, you're definitely not looking for any sort of solo play. So it is much more the onus here on Dead FM to group up, find some picks, maybe get gang into the back line and find and engage onto the Ezreal, which is a difficult and enough task uh, of itself. But yeah, Isaris in a very even position right now. But it's going to go from even to very uneven quite quickly, is what it feels like to me. Because as soon as five members of Detonation Focus Me group up, once the Kale has something like an Infinity Edge yeah. to augment this build, another Infinity Edge comes in for Utapon, and then an R E's pressed mm -hmm. by Seros. Feels good. It feels real good if you're Detonation Focus Me, not mm -hmm. so good if you're Isaris Gaming. And the things you're kind of alluding to, right? Like the level 16, very close to being hit heavy, just ding the level 15 mark. And one of the biggest problems on the map right now for Isaris is that mid lane standing. They've lost there, so when the wave pushes in, they lose prior, go so deep back into their territory, and the ward line has to be multi-stepped, right? Yeah. Like you move it up, it's a reset, you move it up a little bit further, and then you get the Baron control. And this has just been basically five minutes from that last top side team fight where they've just been ebb and flowing illegal legends. Like playing by the playbook, we just concede vision, allow you to take it, and then we push in the side lane and something you yeah. need to practice is uh we call it the ping pong the ping the pong so when you join um it's it's pink <laughs> okay sure yeah Evan flow is already taken yeah, nami's that, got that one on lock nami one, yeah, yeah. It's all we, about it or the sploosh i like the sploosh because it does it does certainly do a bit of splooshing the old Evan flow i don't like the sploosh you don't like the sploosh? i'm not, no, I'm, not man. <laughs> I'm not about that one at all that's fine <laughs> you, just, you gave me a very quizzical look when yeah. i said sploosh i liked it all right, Bugax in a side lane, doing that one through one thing like we were talking about. It's not the play ram. I wanted to talk about the play ram, but uh -huh. we haven't had it. Isaris Gaming a stalwart yeah. in their one through one play. And uh, not really too many answers uh -huh. have come out 
of Detonation Focus Me as far as what they're going to pressure on the other side of the map. They're just waiting for minion waves to be pushed towards them. And they kill them. Yep, and then they do it again. Everybody walks away. Also, Isra's got their hands on the crab top side. See the vision line for uh, Dead FM, really not extended very far. So this is a team, like we are saying, we're talking about the ramp multiple times. We've been talking about Evie, but they're not looking to pressure it in the slightest. Still kind of looking for something onto Bugax here, though. Does have the yeah. dash to get himself over the wall. Crushes his way up Fine. there. Easy peasy. Slow now, maybe in a precarious spot. Ooh. That barrel did hell of a lot of damage in oh. yeah. Pressing that R button out of fear, and the cast comes down to really chunk him out of this fight. Gang has to grand enter the underside of his turret, and Isaris Gaming do finally get rid of that yeah. outer in the mid lane. And that's the thing, right? No kill. Utapon lives at the end of the day, does have to burn the flash, but such a good play from the jungle support duo there. Leona ulti goes out, sets up beautifully for the cask, and Utapon has to pay the price. And now the map state gets a little bit easier to play. If Dead FM have shown they don't want to play aggressive, they don't want to force anything in terms of that, then Isaurus, they could just keep taking this one. They've got three dragons after this one in their back pocket. Double Ocean, if they want to play the side lane, that is super useful. And in this game, like, comp-wise, interesting, but Isaurus just seem like they're doing more on the map. And they also look like they understand how their comp is supposed to work, just that little bit yeah. better than what Dead, F Dead FM do. Because Dead FM now have uh, all of the Exodia completed, right? They've got Infinity Edges galore, they've got the Athenes and the Arden Sensor, and now it should be that Dead FM feel like these teamfight gods, that they can set up for these, uh, these Kale and... Zaya DPS numbers that are mm -hmm. just out of control, but it looks like they're just milling about. Like they don't necessarily understand how to grab themselves these opportunities. And it means that Isaris have been able to get around. They've been diligent. They've got all their vision. They've been sticking to this 1-3-1 and they've mm -hmm. just picked up more and more money as this game's gone on. And I think the real scary thing for Isaris is like, how do we progress the game? We've been taking inches for 28 minutes, right? They've got yep. the dragons, they've got the turrets, they're just pushing in the side lane consistently. CS advantages are starting to become relevant, right? You have 40 in the mid lane, you have almost 40 in the bot side as well, uh, probably closer to 30 there. But in terms of like, how do we break the base? Baron is the super obvious choice, but they don't want to force a 5v5. They want the map to feel large. They want to play the side lanes. If they get all 10 okay, members on one quickness. screen like yeah, this, here it is. Trouble. He's going to get taken down relatively low, but slow. Starts the engage on Isaris' side. Steel in the back line. Slow Evie? still surviving, but Evi joins up. The Divine Judgment was there to start this fight, not to end it. Doesn't actually find anyone, though. The disengage is so strong from Isaris Gaming. They're picking them off on the sidelines. No one to fall down on either side. And how did that team fight end in a crab being taken? <laughs> that was a super well, big battle crab? in the we mid lane. Know who won the fight? Yeah, Flash has got burnt, no deaths all over the place, but uh, it is actually going to be Isaris that picked that one up, so still maintaining this Baron control topside, and just as I was saying it, that is the scary part of the game. The game feels safe for them if they just sit in the side lanes, but that was them committing to the play. Bugax rotates down, they were looking for that fight, they go in and engage that one, and Dead FM... They go for a reset, they've got a couple of extra rewards there. Dead FM now in the mid lane, just... This is the play ram. We're doing it. It's the 4-1, though, and it is uh, Evie Ev in a side lane. We mentioned this before. It's very difficult for anyone to go up against him, mm. but I think Dead FM just need to try and do more in the 4, right? Like, these 4 members need to try and counteract the 1-3-1, one, one, and that's by having a 4 versus 3 that they can actually add pressure to with Evi in a side lane that's going to be a good matchup no matter mm -hmm. who they put up against him. So you understand how Dead FM is supposed to play this out, but they've yeah. been very slow in uh, recognizing that. Mm. And it seems like a very intentional choice, in all honesty, right? Like, uh, they can very easily, and I think they will be doing it now, throw Evi into Rise, because Sayer is the one threat that will make progress in a side lane. Evi now sitting on TP, like that summoner is available, so it's not like they do have a numbers mismatch, and he breaks top turret, resets, now going to do a similar thing on the bottom side, and if he can become a super big threat, just consistently pushing in bottom lane, and we've seen ISG already, they're willing to throw resources to look to pick the side lanes. If they do that fail, that is almost lights out. It's barren for Dead FM. They just clean up everything. But right now, that is, uh, that's not going to be the situation. Sayer actually grouping over and ISD looking to set up strictly around the Baron. Well, parallel convergence. Finds Bogax, but he is uh, not too worried there at all. Has his Warmogs completed. Like you say, the raincoat, or the Spectre's Cow, as some would call it. Not yep. entirely sure who would. Raincoat's much better. 
True Shot Barrage coming on in, just gonna hit some minions, and now the engagers come forward. It's a decent hop, though, as Bugax is so incredibly Ooh. tanky. Another party cast here in the mid lane finds no one, and now Evie looking to chase down. But this tanky Nar build, man, yeah. I feel like Nar is baiting everyone because he's not supposed to be that hard to kill. Is he baiting his own team? That Gragas cast definitely <laughs> went into Narnia. Uh, unfortunately, the button's not landing, but still looking to bait the Baron buff. Dead FM walking in. ISG maintain the vision control, but fighting back right now. Mega is going to be popped. Bugax has flash if he wants to go for it. Yeah, crushes forward, but decides not. Oh, oh that's another one. Doesn't find the Nar button and will get knocked up with that grand entrance. Thankfully, still a very tanky boy. Utapon. Now they may have found Utapon there on the backside, like you mentioned. He's just going to pop the ultimate and get out of there. Another key cooldown. Not available oh. as Evie. He can't do that. He can't run straight in to a Rangelis like this. Because this dude's got a bloodthirst and yeah. a double lifesteal on the airs. He's so strong. And it's just a standoff. Whoever's Kale, whoever Kale is hitting just has to run away. And the same can be said for the Ezreal. Both of these teams have one big threat to play around in. Isaris, they want to speed the game up. They've been starting around this Baron for a long time. The cooldowns are not there. Not only want to play for the here fight. On steel as well. He does have the ultimate. You can Crota break his way out of things. Oh, the okay, classic. The disengage. The classic disengage. Got to catch the side lanes. Bot will push into them eventually. Top is a fairly large wave as well, but it does open up the opportunity into the mid lane you see right now. Do they stick around for turret pressure? You can see Bugax and Oddy are here, but the Mantrid Inspire is going to do a whole lot of good work. The hop into the cask. crush is going to be there, and another cask is going to go completely wide. Bit of a disaster here for Oddy, to be honest. Hasn't found too many of those casts, as now we're going for a potential dive, but Evie on the front line, not as tanky as he'd otherwise want to be. They are going to be able to make their way out, though, and having this Karma on the roster is just... It's a bit gross. Frustrating. Yeah. Frustrating. And I think the best word to describe how these fights are happening is, like, hesitation. Both of these teams know, like, one error just gets chomped by the enemy carry, and then it's lights out. Yeah. It's Baron. The game snowballs incredibly easy. Once either of them have Baron, they just set up, force up mid lane, uh, play a couple of waves, and... Certainly for a very even game. We've had nothing more than like a 2,000 gold lead for the entirety here. And then you do have these non-committal buttons. Steel keeps throwing himself in there because he knows he can just ulti backwards. Slow and Oddy, yes, like a bunch of these ultis are missing, but they're just fishing for an opportunity. They can't just straight up commit onto Utapon or anything like that because gets cleansed, he's fine. We've seen the disengage that can happen, so... They're just kind of fishing for ultis. Eventually, something will land. That's like the, the classic old-school <laughs> yeah. Nidalee. That yeah. champion, you just like full AP. Like, you land a spear, you feel like the greatest player in the world. It's like, well, you threw 54 before that. So the 55th one... Hey, but you if you're I mean? not like, throwing them, you miss job. every spear you don't throw. Yeah, and, and that's right? what I'm saying. They're just throwing them. Eventually, yeah. something will connect and... That could be the Baron fight we've been we've been longing for for like 14 minutes. We almost had a Baron fight before, yeah. but now it's the play ram. And uh, unfortunately, if you say the name, then uh, it eventually does happen, guys. And I think that's my jinx. It is the issue here. True Shot Barrage once again going to come in. It's going to get rid of a shield, and otherwise not do any more than that. Yeah, Finish gone are the days Ugh. of the Ludens, Ezreal. They just like yeah. one hits an entire team before the fight even happens. I know it was it was it was a lot of gameplay to that particular Ezreal, you mm. know? Press an R button as it comes off cooldown every 15 seconds or something like that. Feels good. Yeah, it wasn't so great as uh triple ocean drake now has been picked up by Isaris Gaming. Probably would have preferred those to be infernals, but not gonna happen this game as next is going to be Oh, okay. The Elder Drake, 35 minutes, the Baron is down to half health. Detonation folks me do a lot of damage to this objective right now as Realm Warp is going to get Sayer around here. The pull off is still very, very low, but the quickness dives on in. Gang gets out, the Divine Judgment is going to be there. The hop into the crush and Bug Axe is going to be safe for the moment. The re-engage from Slow, but Evi is still at True Shot oh. Barrage. is going to take him down to his Guardian Angel and Warangelus is still at full health. Finally, Utapon finds himself a kill as the resurrection comes through from his GA, and where Angelus finds the extra kills in the back end. This could be it. He's so big, so much life steal. Goes down very, very low and isn't going to be taken just Ooh. yet as the Mantra Q is going to go just wide. Honey fruit is delicious and will keep the Ezreal afloat for now as Sayer and Slow are looking for Gang and Saros. Detonation folks, they need Look to try Look at the Ocean here. Dragon. So yeah, much exactly. HP back. That's, uh, we keep discounting it, but it's it's a great Drake. Don't you worry about it. 
for these Inspires Lance. working out well. That is a decent oh. Zenith Blade. And the last two kills come in. It's a very delayed one, but it's yes. an ace nonetheless. But Isaris are finally going to make it work. They've been fishing for these team fights for a very long time, and it's actually Dead FM that give it to them. They start up the Baron, and it's a complete wash here. Ace across the board, and now Triple Ocean Dragon. They've had complete control of that side of the map. Now add a Baron to the mix. Rangalis is popping off. IFG, ISG, they're on the up and up. Certainly are. Let's have a look at this fight once more. The Ezreal, just keep your eye on him because he uh, doesn't take very much damage at the yeah. beginning of this one. And you have to think about where Gang started this fight. They blew the KL ulti to keep him alive because he got spotted on the flank. The idea was there a big combo can maybe seal the deal for this one, but this is another Ezreal ulti. Snipes on the back line and keep your eyes on that, man. He's sitting on the flank of the left right now. He's about to eat flash into like multiple people as they're committing for the kills onto like Oddy and Slow on the back end. He goes forwards over the top and Isaris, they just completely follow up, chase them down. Stagger the recalls is a big, another important thing, right? Like, yeah. yes, it's an ace, but there's 30 seconds disconnect between Dead FM's any sort of response, and Isaris now in complete control of this game. Really nice stuff here from Isaris Gaming is we're going to have the full replay as our gang and Saros watch their demise come towards them ever yeah. so slowly. This is sadness. There's nowhere to go. Shield from Saros to try and keep the Rakan alive on the sliver of HP, but just get chomped. Now the mid lane on the pressure. Back to life. Yeah. Dead FM lose their inner turret as Bugax are gonna get slowed by the ultimate out of the Leona. A cask is gonna land, but only onto Gang, so it's gonna be fine for Dead FM for the moment. Isaris Gaming just getting that poke in off the side of this one. Seiya is gigantic. He's got mm -hmm. the coolest hat and a pretty sweet book there as well. Thankfully, LS not here to get upset yeah. about it. And Mortal Reminder is completed from Rorangelis, and he's doing about as much damage as he can possibly yeah. do. Heavy, though. At this stage. Yeah, was looking for the 1v1. Actually forces the Arcane Shift back over the wall, but cop the worst end of the trade. Ezreal now safe, and they have the Triple Ocean Dragon looking to knock on the door of the base. Look at the gold grab. Yeah, that went one, one way very fast. And now base broken, 38 minutes. This is a long one, but as soon as the Baron was taken here by Isaris, it's continuing forwards. It's just really impressive play with a composition that shouldn't necessarily be this strong against what Dead FM have at this stage of the game, given uh, just who Kale is and who the Zyre is. We've got another fight, it's going Kale. to break out. Solar Flare is going to go relatively wide as Evie throws down the Judgment and immediately gets destroyed. Angelus now will just find Mystic Shot after Mystic Shot. Gang is going to be the next one on the chopping block. He's got a big shield, but Angelus doesn't care. He just murders him underneath his Nexus turret. It's a double kill as a sneaky Mystic Shot flies in. And now it's only Nexus turrets between Isaris Gaming and a game one victory here at World's Plays. Still the only member left alive. Nexus turret's gonna fall, but that is gonna be it. Isaris gonna start this one off with a 1-0 scoreline. Very good start to the play here. Yep, making Jake Spawn Tiberi look a little bit better there on the analyst desk mm -hmm. as well. Congratulations to the Latin Americans. This is the super team from the two combined, Latin America North and Latin America South regions. And uh, they have proven it here today. Really yeah. beautiful stuff from these guys. And I just love how controlled it was. Yeah. Well, in two facets, right? Because the early game was a lot of forcing. They're looking for the dive, constantly getting countered by Dead FM. And we kind of saw two different iterations of Isaris. They they recognized that Dead FM, they were giving them space. Yeah. Let's take that space. Yes, they may have a Kale and stuff like that, but we have Rangelis, the big AD carry for this team. They play around it. We've mentioned it so many times, absolutely popping off in the end game team fights. And eventually, Lead somewhat squandered there in a very even game. They eventually find the fight that they were looking for. And as soon as they had the advantage, that was just lights out, game over very quickly. Yep. Really good play here from these guys. Even though they were up against a very farmed Kale, mm -hmm. the fact that we got to our infinity edges on both of our big carries on Dead FM side, they just weren't able to outplay mm -hmm. in these team fights. And I think that, that full tank Nah, man, something about full tank Nah that just worked yeah. extraordinarily well for Isaris Gaming. They were just looking at it and they need to front line. Uh, yeah, pick up a bunch of tanky items. And there were so many times where Dead FM were just like right clicking it. Yeah. Right? And he's just dashing away. Like normally it's the double hop into the big team fight ulti. You rip back everyone into your team. But that was not what we what we saw. It was kind of a distraction at times to open up space for the rest of the lineup. And once the space was there, they just ran away with it. Yeah, exactly. And Dead FM had some really good moments. We can have mm -hmm. a look uh, again. We'll bring up the replay of Gang's four-man Rakan knockup during yeah. the top lane fight, man. Like, 
there were certainly moments of brilliance for this Dead FM roster yeah. as well. And that has to be the frustrating thing about this game, right? Like, if this team fight went a different way, this is Baron. That's a complete ace there onto Isaris, and maybe Dead FM pick up a victory. They don't start off with a 0 2. This is going to be a very frustrating end to this day, but a little bit too split off, opening up space there for their opponents, and yeah, it's certainly a roughie. It is certainly a roughie. You know, I've employed that one as well over yeah. uh, your new home in the LCK. <laughs> um, I like it a lot. But yeah, Ruffy does explain how this one went for Dead FM, especially after the mid game, because they were punished for not doing enough with the leads that they were, mm -hmm. were sort of gifted. And you know my favorite thing about that replay? What's your favorite thing about that Is replay? You don't actually get to see the big four man, like the five man combos from Rakan anymore. Now that you can't like ulti yeah. flash immediately, those opportunities are very, uh, very slim. They don't come up very often, but unfortunately they're squandered by Dead FM. Issa is gonna have a, uh, have a rough <laughs> start but certainly able to close that one out. Look and at that I, damage. As an oh. LCK commentator, I do recognize graphs like this with the disgusting Ezreal mm. damage, but I didn't know that that was uh, anywhere else. Certainly is in Latin America because damn. Mm. Where Angelus, you can see why this squad plays around him. And yeah. you look at this team, and if you've been watching Worlds and uh, MSI for a long time, you probably recognize Say, you recognize mm. Oddi from all of those qualifiers. But it's all about Rorangelis, actually, as push comes to show. And I think the storyline with him and this roster is super interesting. Like, you have the veterans on this lineup in the Saiya and Oddi that you recognize. And when you think about Latam uh, 80 carries, you think of the likes of White Lotus. Yeah. Right? And he was the former teammate of these guys. That and he's are now, still really good. Yeah. yeah that are now surrounding uh, Rorangelis. Uh, and he's a guy that, like, young player coming in. You don't often see, like, a team heavily just play towards that, right? It's a, a big, risky move and certainly paid off here. Damage charge was, like, 14k to 34 was the closest person on his team. Yeah. Uh, mid lane rise like starts off 0-2. That he was the one man that they needed to step up that game and absolutely did. Yep, congratulations to Isaris Gaming. When we return, OPL champions Mammoth look to go undefeated on day one as they face off against Clutch Gaming. Don't go anywhere. Still looking for the return dive. No yeah, cast, but Oddy's in. Coming down. The quickness was there, but it is not enough. Seros now is going to be the dessert. Can they actually grab it? Slow's going to go down for the good of the colony, and Saya misses the Q. Oh, no, oh. it's a disaster. Seros with the outplay. Trishok Barrage gets rid of the Kale, but now in goes oh. Kale. That's a huge knockoff with the grand entrance onto Boris Unipod. Has the Feather Storm out, and it is a storm. Finds himself a kill as the resurrection comes through from his GA. Angelus finds the extra kills in the back end. This could be it. He's so big, so much life steal. Angelus now will just find Mystic Shot after Mystic Shot. Gang is going to be the next one on the chopping block. He's got a big shield, but Angelus doesn't care. He just murders him underneath his Nexus turret. It's a double kill. It's a sneaky. So Josh, you going for our Drive Safe and Safe discount? Yep, using the app Drive and Safe. <laughs> you wanna go? You wanna go, bro? Hey, uh, do not mess with my discount. Woo! You can save up to 30%. Let's go! Nice to meet you, go get him, Tiger. Woo! Sounds like you've got this. Yeah, definitely. Get a discount up to 30% with Drive Safe and Save from State Farm. 